We've all heard of Silicon Valley, right? But what is silicon? Well, it's all around us, making up more than a quarter of the Earth's crust and serving as the basis of much of today's modern technology. Put it this way, if it's got a computer chip in it, it's likely built on silicon. This is Stocko, where a startup and a century-old company are collaborating to produce something called deep silicon in a new and ultra cool way, pioneering the next generation of computerized tomography, or CT to you and me, imaging. Come with me, I'll tell you more. Now I know what you're thinking, because I am too. What is deep silicon? Well, Matt Danielson, he's the creative genius behind the concept, and he's a five-minute bike ride away. Matt. Hi, Mikey. How Welcome. Are How are you? Please have a chair. Yeah, this is, this is epic. This already looks massively impressive. You're the mastermind behind this whole deep silicon concept. What is deep silicon? So normally, Silicon comes in wafers like this. It's cut from like a large uh, sausage and sausage and ingot. And then if the X-rays would enter face on to, to this wafer, it would be very thin. So the absorption efficiency would not be much. But if you turn it edge on, it can have basically any thickness and be a very efficient X-ray absorber suddenly. The important component of this idea is, is that you're linking it to photon counting. How does that work? How does the linkage work and how does it enable photon counting? Yeah, the, 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 the nice thing with, with this idea is that suddenly you're able to use silicon, which is the purest material on Earth, and it's perfect for photon counting. You have a very clean signal and uh, you can count the photons with unprecedented uh, energy resolution. So it's the perfect material if you just can use it, which we managed to do here through this deep silicon approach. What is photon counting from, from a layman's perspective? Right. So if you take a photograph, you need light, obviously, like visible light. To, to, and if it's too dark, you don't get anything. So basically, X-rays are fundamentally the same as visible light. They just have higher energy. So to detect visible light, you could have the silicon like this face on. For silicon, you, you want to, to turn it the other direction to increase the efficiency. And then furthermore, what we do is that we have the X-rays interacting in, in a separated volumes. Uh, so we measure the signal from each individual X-ray, even at very high rates, like uh, uh, many, many millions per, 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 per seconds per square, square millimeter. And all of those pulses then are used to, to generate the image. Matt, so I can't help but notice this awesome robot. What is the product that this robot is making? And then where does that product go for the next phase of the, of the process? So the robot assembles modules that then build up the whole one meter detector uh, that uh, uh, Moa can tell you more about. She's waiting in a, the CT lab down the corridor here. Awesome, brilliant. Mats, Shreitin, thank you so much. underground and I'm meeting Moa should be around this corner there she is hey, hey. Yeah, I feel like we're like under the White House or area yeah, 51 yeah, or something this is pretty secretive it's very secretive like right. you know uh... why is where we're going so kind of secretive and and protected if you like yeah so now we're heading to the what we call the Revo lab or the city lab where we actually installed the first I mean full field of view coverage uh, photon counting detector This is it. This is it. So this is the very secret CT with deep silicon detector. Uh, one of a kind, the only one. Moa, uh, this looks like a normal CT. What's different? Yeah, so I mean, it's a, it's a good point. It is actually, I mean, from the outside, it is a normal CT. Uh, what we did was we took this, and we actually replaced the detector with our deep silicon photon counting detector. Uh, the rest is pretty much intact. And Mo, why is the detector the game changer? What is it about that capability yeah. that will revolutionize CT? It's a, yeah, big, it's, it's a big question, right? It's a big question. <laughs> it's an important question. It's, you know, what we spent the last 10 years on. But basically, 
it's a combination of spatial and energy resolution that makes this detector so I mean, unique, I would say. What does it actually mean in terms of a game-changing moment? I mean, for, you can take an example. Uh, you have, uh, it's very you know, standard to inject iron into the blood uh, to visualize the blood vessels more clearly. That you know, turns up brighter in the CT image. But then you have bone, calcium, and that's also very bright. So those two can be mixed up. They look the same. You don't know, is it a blood clot? Is it calcium? Is it, you know, you don't see the difference. But if you look at the energy spectrum from iodine versus calcium, it's very different. So by measuring the energy of those photons, we can clearly say, no, you know, this isn't blood, this is calcium. Well, I think I get the idea conceptually, but I think in order to get the complete picture, I need to visit the hostel. Mats, before I head off to um, the hospital, what's the future hold? Well, uh, of course we want this to be implemented in the hospitals down the line, but, uh, but uh, next insight is further clinical evaluations at hospitals around the world. Mats, absolutely brilliant insight into uh, Deep Silicon and everything that you've been doing over the, over the last 10 years. Really appreciate it. Take Thanks, care. Mikey. Thanks a lot. Thanks for coming. Bye. Now, Professor Homelin is the person I need to speak to regarding the clinical bit, and he's at the Karolinska Institute. It's about a 10 minute ride away. What is it that your job is um, and why is computerized tomography so important to carry out that function? Yes, I'm a, I'm a neuroradiologist. Um, that means that I'm uh, taking pictures sort of of the brain, of the end of the brain vessels. And I also work with uh, removing clots in acute stroke and treating uh, aneurysms that could give rise to, uh, to um, hemorrhages in the brain. What are some of the challenges that you've got when you're trying to diagnose, say, blood clots? It is to uh, find the blood clots in really small vessels and to understand what type of blood clots those are, because that can influence how you treat them. Um, it can also be in terms of, of hemorrhages, uh, which, is, which we also deal a lot with. It's to find the actual cause for the hemorrhage. And if you cannot see the really small vessels, you cannot, in many cases, determine what is the actual cause of that bleeding. And what is the risk of not identifying rapidly one of those clots? We might not be able to perform the optimal treatment. Uh, it's also true if you, have, if you have the possibility to visualize the really small vessels prior to an operation, you can plan the procedure in a different way, so you can actually know already from the CT scan, from the regular CT scan, uh, where to go and how to position your devices. So if I was to ask you what are the, you know, bullet list the main advantages of, of deep silicon detectors, in, yes. in order of priority, what would yes. it be? I would say uh, uh, one, uh, tissue discrimination, the, po the possibility to, to separate different uh, tissues efficiently, Number two, increased resolution. And also, uh, number three, to identify low contrast lesions and uh, low radiation. Professor Homelin, brilliant insights. Thanks so much for uh, Thank taking you. a few moments Thank to share today. Cheers. Thank you very much. So there you have it, photon counting CT with deep silicon detectors, pretty impressive stuff. The future Professor Homlin described may not be that far off actually, enabled by GE Healthcare and Prismatic Sensors uniting to bring this pioneering capability to the market. What a ride, literally, and I'm fascinated to see what comes next. But till then, take care.